What if I told you that your osteoarthritis diagnosis is dead wrong and every day your joints are paying for the price of this misdiagnosis? Imagine this, your hands stiffen like a stone, your knees ache, but you are told that it's just about aging or wear and tear. But what if actually not osteoarthritis is your problem? Meet my patient, Sarah, that for years she suffered without being the need to suffer, trapped by an osteoarthritis diagnosis until I discovered that her pain wasn't from aging, but rather from rheumatoid arthritis. And here is the shocker. Osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis are not the same. Most people confuse them. And because of that, they chase the wrong treatments, they ignore the real damage, and they let irreversible harm steal their mobility. And as a rheumatologist with more than 15 years of experience, I have seen patients lose years to this dangerous confusion. So in this video, I will break it down. What are the key differences between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis? And how do I, as a rheumatologist, diagnose them? And what do you need to know to to get the right treatment before it's too late. Let me tell you about Sara, a patient who came to me after many years of being treated for osteoarthritis when she actually was suffering from something completely different. Sara was a 52-year-old professional writer, very active, and she was relatively healthy. Five years before seeing me, she began noticing stiffness in her fingers, especially in the morning. In the beginning, it would come for a few weeks and then they would disappear. But over time, her fingers became more swollen. She even had difficulties removing her rings, but she pushed through the pain thinking that it was just from too much typing. When Sarah mentioned it to her primary care physician, he reassured her that this is normal for her age. After all, her mother had arthritis of her hands too, but Sarah's symptoms kept getting worse. Her morning stiffness lasted longer and then the pain became more severe. She started taking ibuprofen every day just to cope with the pain. And within a year, the pain spread it to her wrist and then she developed carpal tunnel syndrome. Her doctor recommended some night splints and less typing. And Sarah followed his advice, but she saw very little improvement. And soon it became harder to get out of the bed in the morning. She felt like she was the tinker man. Her joints were warm and they were visibly swollen. When steroid injections in her knees only provided for temporary relief, then her doctor finally realized something is not right and he sent her to me. As soon as I heard her story, I immediately suspected this could be rheumatoid arthritis instead of osteoarthritis. The difference is crucial because these conditions require completely different treatments. Let's break down the key differences between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis so you can recognize what is happening in your body before your doctor does. Osteoarthritis is one of the most common types of arthritis that affects approximately 32 millions of people in the United States and many others in the world. It is also called the wear and tear arthritis because it is caused by cartilage breaking down over time. But new research says that osteoarthritis is also caused by a low degree of inflammation that is happening in your joints. Osteoarthritis usually affects weight-bearing joints like your knees, your hips, your spine, and parts of the hands. It can cause pain and stiffness, but it will last for a few minutes and up to 30 minutes after you wake up and then will quickly disappear after you start moving. It is usually asymmetrical, meaning that one knee, one hip, or one hand is more affected than the other one. In the hands, osteoarthritis impacts more the dominant hand, especially the thumb joint, because it is used the most. Osteoarthritis causes pain, but not much swelling, and the joints are usually not warm to touch. On the other hand, rheumatoid arthritis affects about 1.5 million people in the United States, and it is the most common form of autoimmune arthritis 
also called inflammatory arthritis. And this is an autoimmune disease caused by your immune system attacking your joints, but also other organs like the eyes, the lung, or the heart. Now coming back to the joints, rheumatoid arthritis affects primarily the small joints of your fingers, the wrist, and the feet, but it can also involve other bigger joints like the shoulders, the knees, or the hips. Rheumatoid arthritis causes pain, swelling, and severe prolonged morning stiffness that will usually last more than one hour. What is specific for rheumatoid arthritis is that the joints are affected in a symmetrical and bilateral pattern. And this means that both hands, both feet, both knees are affected at the same time. And this happens in most cases. People affected by rheumatoid arthritis can also have other symptoms like fatigue, dry eyes, dry mouth, low-grade fevers, changes in the voice, shortness of breath, as the inflammation affects the joints, but also other parts of the body. Now, remember Sarah? She had pain, she had swelling and stiffness in both of her hands. Then she developed bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome and then she had both of her knees affected. And this is not the story of a patient with osteoarthritis or with wear and tear arthritis. So knowing these differences will help you catch rheumatoid arthritis early before it causes permanent damage to your joints. But how do I actually make the diagnosis of osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis? Obviously, taking a good medical history is critical in making the diagnosis. And I always spend an hour with my new patients to make sure I hear their story, how their symptoms develop in time, what they have done trying to help themselves and what worked or what didn't work. If I suspect osteoarthritis, then I don't need any blood test because there are no blood tests to help for the diagnosis, but rather I would order some x-rays that can show cartilage loss or some bone spurs. If I suspect rheumatoid arthritis, then I definitely order blood tests like rheumatoid factor, anti-CCP antibodies, inflammatory markers, but I also check for hepatitis B, C, and TB. I do get a CBC or a comprehensive metabolic panel to evaluate the liver, the kidneys, and to look for signs of anemia, which can be caused by this ongoing chronic inflammation. And then I order x-rays or an ultrasound or even an MRI that can help me evaluate if rheumatoid arthritis caused any damage to the joints because rheumatoid arthritis can cause erosions in the joints, thinning of the bones, and also deformities of the joints. Why does having the correct diagnosis matter? Because rheumatoid arthritis requires early treatment and the treatment will stop the progression of the disease and prevent further damage. While osteoarthritis can be treated many times with lifestyle changes, rheumatoid arthritis often needs medication in addition to the lifestyle changes. So if the treatments differ, how do we treat them correctly? As I mentioned, the treatment is very different in osteoarthritis versus rheumatoid arthritis. While osteoarthritis treatment focuses on joint protection, rheumatoid arthritis treatment focuses on stopping the inflammation and the overactive immune system. Because inflammation is like a fire, and if you don't stop it in time, it will burn the whole house. Osteoarthritis treatments will focus also on weight management. And this is critical because maintaining a good weight will reduce the joint stress. Now remember, with every five pounds that you lose, you will extend the life of your knees by five more years. And implementing an anti-inflammatory diet, a Mediterranean diet was also shown to decrease the inflammation in your body and maintain a good weight. But also physical therapy and aquatic programs will maintain the strength of your muscles and the flexibility of your joints. And supplements like turmeric, glucosamine, and collagen will also help people with osteoarthritis. And pain relief options that can include topical creams and sometimes injections with corticosteroids or PRP treatments may help. And this is how I help my patients in the clinic with all of these options. In some cases, severe cases of osteoarthritis, when the arthritis is causing bone on bone rubbing, then replacement of the joint is beneficial. And I will need to send the patients to an orthopedic physician to evaluate them for replacement which means 
surgery. Now let's talk about rheumatoid arthritis treatment. First, as I said, early diagnosis and treatment is critical, and we have many options to treat rheumatoid arthritis these days, from DMARTs or disease, modifying anti-rheumatic drugs like hydroxychloroquine, methotrexate, or leflunomide, to even more targeted therapies that we call biologics, such as TNF inhibitors, IL-6 inhibitors, or JAK inhibitors for more severe cases of rheumatoid arthritis. If you have been watching my channel for a while, then you know that I talk about an integrative approach that I have implemented in my practice for my patients for many, many years. If you can be my patient, that you can also benefit from this approach. As I have recently shared in my new book, Thriving with Rheumatoid Arthritis, yes, lifestyle, is as important as medications in treating rheumatoid arthritis. And if you combine an anti-inflammatory nutrition plan with certain exercises with stress management, then you are on the path towards long-term remission. But if you are still unsure about your diagnosis or your ideal treatment plan, then book a consultation with me and I will be happy to help you. So what happened to Sarah? After her initial evaluation, I ordered some blood tests, some x-rays, and I confirmed my suspicion that she was suffering from rheumatoid arthritis and not osteoarthritis. She then started treatment and within four months, she felt so much better and she resumed her life. She became again active and she joined a volleyball team Team. Over the course of another six months, she changed her diet, she avoided any refined carbs, any sugars, and all the processed foods. She started to cook at home, and she was able to decrease the dose of her medications dramatically. She feels great today, and we see each other every three months. Now to recap, not all joint pain is the same. And understanding whether you have osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis is the key to get the right treatment. If you experience prolonged symmetrical stiffness and swelling in your joints, don't ignore it. Get evaluated as early as possible. And now that you know the differences between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, it's important to know which foods are most harmful for people with rheumatoid arthritis because if you're not careful about your diet, you may end up relying on more and more medications and struggling with ongoing pain. And I have included all of this information in this next video.